Hey, good morning, nieces and nephews. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, we're going to touch on a topic that uh, kind of personal to me over the last six months, six and a half months. If you've been around, you'll know that uh, six months ago, we sold everything that we had in Tampa, paid off all of our debts, moved over to DeLand, and um, I haven't been working this whole time until recently, until a month ago. And a lot of you guys were asking, like, what are you doing now for work? What are you doing now for work? Well, I'm going to touch on that. Uh, but I also want to talk about the physical and... Uh, mental effects of uh, not working for five months. Like what kind of toll did that play? Now it wasn't what I thought. So let's go along for a little ride uh, on the way to work. And uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. All right, off we go into the wild blue yonder. Yeah, I I'm sure um, there might be some people that click on this video not expecting it to be a moto vlog, but uh, that's what it is. So uh, uh, before you complain about riding around, talking and wasting however many minutes of your time, I just understand that coming in. <laughs> That's what I do on my channel. Uh, man, for those who have been around, you know that uh, I have fallen in love with this side of the state of Florida and all the beauty that comes with it. I mean, I think Florida is a pretty state. Uh, all in all, you've got backcountry, you've got beaches, you know, you've got uh, swamp creatures and swamp things. But I, yeah, I found this new way to new way to work the other day. And I've been taking it because it's a lot prettier than going down the uh, little highways. Anyway, that's not what you guys are here for, I don't think. Yeah, let's talk about being unemployed for five months. And, and it was an intentional move and uh, what kind of effects that had. You know, I've been working since 1990. I was 14 years old. That's right. It's 1976.5 on your FM dial. Pretty steady since 1990. Now, there, there were a couple of periods where you know, I was unemployed unintentionally, uh, once for COVID and uh, once back in uh, 2010. My wife and I have a very traditional marriage where, you know, I'll, I'll take care of the outside chores, you know, anything that needs fixing that's within my uh, breadth of understanding. You know, that's what I do. You know, I, I handle the finances for the most part. I mean, we're not, neither one of us are like, we're not controlling. It's just, that's just how we are. You know, if, if things are being cooked, if it's not on the grill, you know, she's cooking, you know, she does 99.9% .9 of the laundry. It's, uh, I don't know, it, it works out for us. We're both, you know, kind of traditional people like that. So, you know, working, you know, being, being a breadwinner is kind of built into who I am as a man. That's just how it is. And, you know, I've often made sacrifices, and she's made sacrifices too, but, you know, I've often made sacrifices to ensure that, you know, I had the right amount of income to make sure the family was taken care of. You know, and last year, last year I worked at that Carly Davidson dealership. It was only for nine months. It wasn't very long. You know, I, one of my complaints, if you guys saw the video about working there, one of the biggest complaints was that you know, I, I never had a, a single weekend day off. And, you know, boohoo, it's retail. I get it, but you know, when your wife is a Monday through Friday educator and your, you know, kids are Monday through Friday school, the only time that you have to spend with them are weekend days. Well, let me take that back. I had Easter Sunday off. Everybody did. Okay, so I lied. I had one weekend day off. You know, that that was a that was a tough job for my uh, for my psyche. And uh, you know, when we sold everything and and october that the plan was let's sell everything and get completely out of debt i don't like where the economy is right now and none of you guys do right nobody likes it and i'm like you know, i really think cash is king right now you know after working for a few years and not really taking some some good time off I, and i ran it by the wife i said hey i'd like to take you know a couple months off and by a couple i meant like two or three and uh you know within that time i, I started business and we're going to cover that on the second part of this video, it's going to be two parts on, you know, what am I doing now? Back in, back in late January or early February, I said, uh, I said, hey, you know, I've put money into this business so far and I'm at a point now where I need to pay for marketing or shut the fuck up, basically. And I said, I really don't want to pay for any marketing until I start getting some, uh, some income in. So I told her, I said, I'm going to look for a, a yeah, you know, part-time job or a low stress full-time job. You know, I said in the video uh, where I talked about working at Harley Davidson that, Hey, I'd love to work at another dealership. Just not in, well, I didn't say I'd love to. I said, would I work at another dealership? 
I don't know. It has to be pretty hard up, but I wouldn't mind doing something like being a driver or you know, working in parts, something that you know didn't require that stress of being in sales because I don't like it. You know, I've been in sales since 2002, and I'm just kind of over it. Good at it, just over it, you know. And uh, uh, I started applying to a bunch of places. I sent my resume out. If you watch the video where I'm washing my bike and talking about it, I sent my resume actually to every single dealership in the area, um, not just Harley ones. You know, I don't, I don't care. Triumph, Honda, I don't, don't really care. And um, I said, hey, I, I want to work around motorcycles. This is what I do, but I don't want to don't sell them. And I was hit up by all of them, you know, for something, parts, you know, porter. I didn't really want to be a porter, driver, you know, all those kinds of things. And, you know, nothing was really coming up. I worked a part-time gig out at Daytona Bike Week. But now I have a different job, and again, we're gonna we're gonna touch on that in just a minute. When I worked at the dealership, well, before the dealership, I had a job that had me relatively sedentary. You know, I sat a lot, whether in my car or at home in my home office, or sitting with uh, uh, the the employees who reported to me. And you know, I like to drink, I like to eat, so I got. I've always been kind of big, but I was—I got big during that job. Going to the dealership, working nine months, constantly moving bikes—that was a—that was a workout, man. So I lost quite a bit of weight. You know, everybody noticed it. You know, I felt good about it. In comes not working for a few months. I immediately noticed a uh, increase in my weight. <laughs> not fun, right? But that wasn't the biggest problem. I mean, I'd like to lose some of that again. I, I, but I still like beer a lot and food. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get there, maybe definitely not healthy it's two part the the mental effects the psychological effects here you know my whole life um well not my whole life but basically from 1995 until now until last year you know i had responsibilities in 1990 i was 14 so the first few years of working i was it was just spending money you know i saved a little bit bought a couple cars here and there but you know, I had responsibility. So there was this drive to, I have to get up and go to work so I can provide this kind of lifestyle for me. You know, after I got married and kids, now it was, I have to provide this level of lifestyle for me and my family. And uh, I'm never bitter about that. You know, it's just what you do, right? You can't just quit because then what's your family going to do, right? So it's, so you kind of have a drive. You have a purpose. Why do I get up in the morning? I have to do this so my family can live like this. You know, you've seen the memes. My hands are dirty, so her hands can look like this. You know, whatever. That's you know, that's how you approach life as a working man, working adult. October comes along. We pay off everything. We pay off all of our debts. Now we did rent a house. I know some of you think that's a waste of money. I don't. Then I don't have. You know, the pressure is not there. Like, I don't have to go to work right now. I don't move over here and think, oh, shit, I better get a job right now. So I can kind of take it easy. And for the first few weeks, that was like, oh, this is kind of cool, man. You know, I was building the business, kind of doing it slowly, you know, acquiring some knowledge and some skills and uh, equipment for my for my business. And then after a while, I would say around January, which is when I first started thinking maybe I should get a part-time job. I, I mean, it wasn't just laziness, but it, it got to a point where it's like, then I felt like, what am I even doing? Like, well, what is my purpose in life? And this isn't a poor me story. I know some of you guys think, oh, you, know, you do what you can, whatever. you need psychological help, whatever. that's a totally different topic. But no, but it was, I'd get up, I'd work a little bit on the equipment that I have in my garage. I would, you know, learn some more about the business I was trying to start, but you know, for the most, I stayed busy, but for the most part, I was just, you know, at home and lonely and no drive. Like I didn't have to go to work right now. I just felt like all my life I've had a purpose. And right now I feel like I don't, you know, and I'm getting fatter. And they're just, you start questioning life, you know, and then I get that little part-time, not part-time, that temp job over at Daytona International Speedway for bike week. And even even going to that, I'm like, well, this ends in 10 days and then what? Yeah, it's wild the effects that that, that has on you when you kind of lose your purpose a little bit. And so I, I really amped up the uh, job searching. You know, I'm, I'm trying different government jobs around the area. You know, everybody loves the government, right? Who, who wouldn't want to be employed by them? <laughs> No, so I, I finally got a job offer. I mean, it doesn't pay very well right now, but honestly, with not having the debts that we used to have, it doesn't need to pay well. I would like more money because, 
our bike parts, right? Or another motorcycle or something. You know, I want to, I want play money. So where do I work now? Some of you guys have figured it out because you've been there and you've come up, you've uh, run across me. I'm now at Seminole Harley Davidson in Sanford, Florida. It's one of the uh, highest volume Harley Davidson stores in the country, uh, usually number one in the state as well. Uh, and I'm working in parts. And my official title, when I clock in, I, I'm hourly, is parts manager, but they're not paying me like that yet. They're kind of, they kind of got me on a 60 day, hey, learn the role. And then after 60 days, we'll reevaluate and uh, move you into this parts manager role. Perfect. Okay. I don't mind doing that. You know, they, they took a risk on me. I remember in the interview, the guy's like, you have no parts experience. You know, how, how do we know? And he told me it, it's hard to you know put you right into the management role when everybody else there knows more than you about parts. I mean, okay, fine. I completely understand it. I, my answer to him was, hey, it's it's really hard to sell you aptitude in an interview. Uh, but trust me when I say, it, I'll get it. Now, your old uncle might be dumb, but I'm also stupid. <laughs> anyway, I, I pick up shit. You know, I'm not I'm not saying I'm the smartest man in the world, obviously. Yeah, I've seen some of you guys come in. A few of you come in and say, hey, Uncle Paul Gator. That's always cool. It's always so cool when people come in and say hi to me because they watch the channel. Uh, but this is the first time I've like officially said anything about it. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it a little bit. I'm going to get up the road here to work. Uh, I'm going to see what I can get away with filming. I haven't really talked about my YouTube stuff at work. Yeah, anyway, we're going to get on up the road here. This is Highway 17 between the land and Sanford. And uh, yeah, we'll see you down there. Good news is we picked a uh, we picked a slow day to bring the camera inside of work. Been here a little over a month now. I haven't recorded on the inside. But this is the new Casa de la Bogator. Look at this guy. He's trying to look all hard. It, this guy, why well, he is hard. I know the feeling. <laughs> I'm hard all the fucking time. I think I got all them damn kids, man. Uh, in all seriousness, we have been in this dealership two or three times on the channel in the past. Uh, I've been here with uh, Shay Tree, Shay Lisi, her two wheels and blockhead a couple of times for their uh, for the moto vlog meetup that we've done. I did it in 21 and 22. Uh, Shay Lisi and I came up here last year when I picked up the night train. This is the dealership that uh, offloaded it from the truck for me. It's a nice spot. One of the busiest dealerships, like I said, in the state and uh, even in the country. So, yeah, I'm uh, one of the parts monkeys here. So. You guys are in the area, want to come uh, get some parts, some bars, pipes, whatever. I'm your guy. I'll get you taken care of. Anyway, so this is one thing that I'm doing. And uh, when we get back to the house, I'll show you the uh, part two, the uh, business ownership side of what your old Uncle Bogator is into these days. I've already had people come up and ask me in here, do you like it better than the other place? I'm not going to name the other place. You guys know. Yes, no. You know, I kind of mentioned that on the bike when we rode in. But um, I think I like the position better. I like all kinds of positions, but I like this one a lot. Uh, it's not anywhere near as stressful. There's still a sales component, but I'm selling parts. I would rather do that than to go through the headache and hassle of selling a whole ass motorcycle. Um, the ownership's actively involved. The owner rides, you know, so it's a good environment. I dig it. So far, it's only been a month. Let's see what happens. All right, now that we're back to the house, this is actually, uh, I, I recorded this over three days, believe it or not. It's just been kind of wild. But uh, lastly, what I'm doing with myself is I, I started a pressure washing business. And, uh, you know, it's a low barrier to entry. I am starting off pretty slow. I mean, I'm brand new. Florida is saturated with uh, pressure washers. Slowly but surely getting my name out there. In fact, I've got a a job tomorrow to do. Uh, I'm off from work, but I'll show you my rig real quick. Just an old retired Home Depot Anderson trailer that I got while I was still in Tampa. Uh, it's a little small for everything, but we'll grow. Uh, I've got a way too small of a pressure washer. That's my next purchase as I get some money. And then I, uh, I built this soft wash system. I plumbed up everything. Um, I built that proportioner valve using this uh, pump from Tractor Supply. I made that mounting plate for soft washing. Uh, it gets the job done. Bought a ladder, ladder rack, found some good deals, man. There's a lot of good stuff out there on uh, on Marketplace that you can find. Ideally, I get this going. Um, I get this going and make money just for myself. Uh, my problem is marketing. I'm not marketing enough, nor am I marketing well enough. Uh, but I love to just work for myself. Um, I know that comes with its own set of stresses and headaches. I reported 
self income this year on my taxes for the first time and it was an absolute nightmare to deal with but um, you know from the beginning of this video I talked about being un unemployed for four months to now where I have a full-time job at the dealership and I'm doing this on my days off when I get jobs I stay pretty busy and I'm filming I'm doing YouTube still I don't think anything is gonna pry me away from that you never know. You never know what's going to happen in the future, right? And maybe I get so busy with this pressure washing gig that I don't have time for YouTube. And, uh, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be an awful thing. It's not what I want, but who knows? Yep, that's where I'm at in my, uh, my employment journey. So, uh, now you know. Those of you who are asking and those of you who weren't asking, now you know. Oh, by the way, for those of you um, who, have bought, uh, who bought the Swamp King shirts back in January, thank you so much. I still have two of those shirts in 4X. I know those are pretty big, uh, but those were my highest sellers. So I did get more of those than I got of the other sizes. So if you're 4X, look down below, below the video, there's still two of those 4X shirts. Hopefully we can get those gone. So like I said, thank you for coming along for this video and all videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.